Hello. In the last couple of videos, I've emphasized the use of technology in the form of spreadsheets, Excel and Google Sheets, to help us solve actuarial exam problems on financial math. Though, of course, on the actual exam itself, you can't bring such a spreadsheet with you. So in this video, I want to go back to emphasizing use of financial functions on a calculator. And, and I have an old BA2 Plus here. Uh, the newer ones work in similar ways. To help us find an unknown interest rate for a sinking fund, that's going to be used to pay back a loan. And we want to find such an interest rate that's going to make it equivalent to a certain ordinary payback scheme. It's problem 3.3.4 in Broberman. Smith can repay a loan of 250,000 in one of two ways. The first way is an ordinary way, although they are annual payments instead of monthly. 30 annual payments based on an amortization of I equals 0.12, so the assumption there is this is going to be paid back with an annuity immediate, um, even though it doesn't say that, and 0.12 is an effective annual rate. The second option is with a sinking fund. 30 annual interest payments, just interest, to the lender at rate of 10%, along with 30 level annual deposits into a sinking fund that's earning an unknown interest rate J, the goal is to find the value of J, which is an effective annual rate that's going to make the two schemes equivalent. All right, so it's probably best to start with option one and think about what's going to go on here. So with option one, your timeline goes up through time 30. These are years. Your payments are unknown at the moment. Let's call the unknown payment P1. going to have to find P1 probably to help us solve the problem. And these are going to pay off the loan. The present value of all these payments at time zero has to be the loan amount 250,000. So your equation of value is 250,000 equals P1 A30. These are annual payments. The interest rate is an annual effective annual rate. The interest rate is going to be 0.12. So I need to find that present value A and divide both sides by it. I'll use the calculator here, but this is not the financial functions that I was talking about at the beginning here. This is ordinary calculator usage. Should have the formula for this memorized by now. You'd, here's the way I do it. I take the 0.12, the I, and add one to it, get one to it to get 1.12. I take the reciprocal of that to get V, the um, discount factor. That's what's gotta be raised to the 30th power. I need to subtract that from one and divide both sides by the interest rate I, 0.12. The value of A here is about 8.055. I won't bother writing that down. Take the reciprocal of that and multiply it by 250,000. The payments are kind of high every year, but that's the way this problem is. P1 is 31,035.91 if you round it, but I'm gonna keep more decimal places to play it safe so my errors don't compile on themselves. All right, so that's what the situation is for payback scheme one. What about payback scheme two with the sinking fund? Well, you've got two things going on here. You've got your payments to the lender and you've got your deposits into the sinking fund. The payments to the lender for the first 29 years here are just interest, just interest there. 10% of 250,000 is 25,000. Those are the payments to the lender for the first 29 payments. The last payment includes the 25,000 from interest, but also pays off the balance, also pays 250,000 the last payment is really 275000 But think of it as a sum of these two things. We don't know, uh, at least initially, how much we're going to pay into the sinking fund. Let's call that P2. I think P2 is going to be easy to figure out here. What we ultimately want to know is the unknown interest rate, J, for that sinking fund, an effective annual rate to make these equivalent. What value of P2 would make these equivalent? Well, if your total outlays every year are the same. So in other words, um, P2 plus 25,000 
is going to have to equal 31,035.91. P2 plus 25,000 must equal 31,035.91439 must equal P1. Therefore, P2 itself must be 6,035.91439. And now, to finish the problem, we need to find the interest rate J for the sinking fund that's going to make these deposits accumulate to 250,000 so we can pay back the balance by time 30. All right, so this is a matter of just now setting up your equation of value, and now we will need the financial functions in the calculator because we have an annuity here. And the solving for interest rates analytically is difficult, and we'll see that when we check the answer. Um, so the equation of value would be 6,035.91439. We're looking at an accumulated value at time 30 equal to 250,000, so I need an S here instead of an A. S30... J must equal 250,000. Now I could divide both sides by 6,035.9, but I don't need to. I'm ready to use the financial functions. Uh, let's see, let's just check the number of payments per year. I'll do second and then this button here. See the P slash Y. Payments per year is one, which I, I usually keep as a default. Now, if you had monthly payments, what you could do is you could think of this as payments per month instead, and then make sure your interest rate is a monthly interest rate. Um, but this is annual payments, so there's no problem there. Uh, we have 30 payments, so let me type 30, and then press N for the number of payments. Uh, the present value of this at time zero is zero. I'm not paying for the, this annuity. Um, so I'm going to put 0 and enter PV. So 0 is stored into the present values. Think of these payments, these deposits, as going out. Okay, they're, you know, you're writing checks from one account to another. Think of this as money going out. So I'm going to think of the 6035.91439 as a negative quantity because it's money going out. Put that in PMT, and now put the 250,000 as a positive amount that you're going to take out of that account now. 250,000, right there. It's a positive amount. Think of that as the future value. Enter it into FV. Now we are really ready to compute the interest rate. CPT I slash Y compute interest rate per year. CPT I slash Y about 2.13%, and this is a percent already. The answer for J is about 2.1322% as they, they carry that many decimals in the answer key. Don't forget your percent sign. That is as a percent. That's how it returns the answer. If you're unsure if this is right, or if you wanted to double check in some way, you could always now use the formula for this. This would be 1 plus J to the 30th minus 1 divided by j. You, know, you can see why it would be difficult to solve for j here analytically, really impossible because you've got a j there and a j there with a 30th power there. It's, it's not going to be possible to solve for j analytically. But let's just check that this works. Let's take this number and divide by 100, add 1 to it, raise it to the 30th power, subtract 1, Divide by J, divide by 0 0.021322. Multiply that by 6,035.91439, and you do get effectively 250,000. Okay, so I'm confident that this J is the answer. And yes, I did double check it with the answer key. That is correct.